Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris, and welcome to Talk Like a Leader. I have, again, with me this week, Kevin Eikenberry, my friend, colleague, collaborator, business partner. So welcome, Kevin. It's good to have you with me again. Yeah, I'm glad to be back, Guy. And today, we're continuing our conversation about content that's in a recently released book that uh, Kevin and Wayne Trammell wrote, The Long Distance Teammate. We're going to talk about building and maintaining trust. So I like to get Kevin's perspective on that. On that, he's got a lot of experience as a team leader in that arena, and I thought it'd be valuable to get his perspective. So, Kevin, there's a chapter in the book about building and maintaining trust. And rather than take it as a given that people know why that matters, let's start there. What? Why do we as leaders need to build and maintain trust? Well, first of all, I'm glad that you had me on because you didn't start out by saying, here's a guy that doesn't do it well, and so don't do what he says. Uh, so, <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> we have some success at doing it. We do. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and and so, you know, why does trust matter? Well, and, you know, take, take the distance out of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when there is higher trust w across a team and with us as a leader, we, we will be more productive, we'll have less rework, we'll have less stress, we'll have lower frustration, we'll have better outcomes. I mean, people often think, Guy, about trust as one of those soft skills. I recently heard them, now people are calling, apparently people are calling soft skills, power skills. Oh, okay. Whatever. But okay. a lot of people wanna call it that. And I would say, listen, anything that we could do like if we get better at trust, we have less turnover, less rework, higher productivity, things can get done faster and easier. That's not a soft skill. That's not a power skill. That's a business imperative. That's a business critical skill. Yeah. Yep. So in the remote world, uh, speaking from both the, the long distance teammate, long distance leader idea, what is different about the remote world compared to the co-located world that makes building and maintaining trust different in any way? Or I, maybe I should say, is it different? Well, we have less clues, right? Okay. When we're in the hallway and we see each other. Uh, we have the chance to interact, uh, which gives us some chance to hopefully build trust, but at least to know where people are. But the longer that we're working separately, the more it's like, um, you know, Beware the man behind the curtain, if you think about the Wizard of Oz. Like, you just don't know what's back there, right? Yeah. And so we have less clues. We have less information. We have fewer interactions with people. So that means that every interaction takes on greater importance. And so if we screw one up, it may take, you know, we all know that like trust can grow and trust can, trust can shrink. Right. Kind of, some people have used the metaphor of the bank account. Right. And so if... If there are fewer deposits and withdrawals, mm -hmm. every withdrawal is a bigger impact, right? If the, and so I would just say that, that I, I think there's two big areas. We talk in the book about what we call the trust triangle. We actually right. did it in the long distance leader and we continued it in the long distance teammate. And if you think about the triangle as being three big components of trust, uh, one is, do we have a common purpose? So if we're thinking about you and a team member, Right. Do I believe that we have common purpose? And if we have common purpose, then that will help build trust. And that one's probably the least affected guy by, by the remote piece. Okay. But competence, like, do I know that you know something? Or what do you know? Or how much of this do you know? Or how good are you at this? The longer your team members are working apart from each other, the less likely they have that information. The less likely you have that information. You may have hired people since they begin working from home. You've never right. directly observed them. So that area of competence. And then lastly, motives. Do I, can I trust their competence? Can I trust that they can do it? And do I trust their motive? And so now if you flip it around and as team members that you have, people that you have on your team, if they don't know you as well, 
and you know all of the societal cues say we can't trust the boss mm, right. right i mean who are the bad guys in the movies i mean they made a movie called horrible bosses after all yeah, like so five. all of the <laughs> All of the backdrop says, if I don't know better, I should probably not trust the motives of the boss. Right. They're just out for the business or, right. or whatever. So the point is, I'm not saying that we are or that that's accurate or appropriate. I'm mm -hmm. saying that in absence of anything else, that's directionally where people will head. So right. if you think about those three parts, and I've talked way too long here, common purpose, competence, and motives are the ways that we need to be thinking about how do we start to build trust with others. So... Okay, so it's important the team trust each other. It's important that the team trust the boss, they're the leader, because and for the reasons you listed, you know, in, increased productivity, less friction, less conflict, a whole host of things that come out of that. Yep. So what can a leader do to help build trust in their team? Not not really just so that they are trusted, but so that the team trust each other. How can they help their team members or teammates build trust? Across the team. Across the team, yeah. So one of the things, back to this idea of competence, is let everybody on the team know what other people are doing and okay. where other people are succeeding. Mm -hmm. So if we think about this from a feedback perspective, we always have to be careful about, you know, giving sometimes praise in public doesn't go as well right. as we think it would. Right. But nonetheless, people need to be aware. Hey, if you've got issues with those Excel documents, Angie's been having great success with those. Angie's a person that you can reach out to. Now, I've given Angie some feedback in that public vein, but right. what I've also done is raise the perceived credibility of everybody else with Angie, and they just flat didn't know. Right. Didn't have a clue. Yeah. Or they might have had a clue, as you said earlier, in the office. They might have said, every time I walk by, she's working on Excel, she must know something about it. Like right now, I got no clue that Angie's even knows how to spell Excel. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, but if but if the boss, if the leader says that, yeah. then I know where I can go. Think about a job that you join a team that you joined at one point. You just didn't know who are the go to people. Yeah. And once you knew those go to people for various things, what happened to your trust with that person? It went up. And so providing those ways for people to make those connections is a very practical way that doesn't even feel sort of soft yeah. uh, that you start to help build this across the team. We got to give people the chance to get to know each other. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. But I mean, that's maybe something you haven't thought of that you could definitely do. So is it fair to say that because of the remote environment, like you said, I'm not going to, as a coworker or, or a, just a teammate, I'm not going to walk by Angie's desk because like in my case, I'm in South Carolina and she's in Florida right now. Today she's in Florida, but she lives in her RV. So tomorrow she'll be somewhere else. She's wherever she needs to be, but I'm not walking by her desk and Wayne's in Las Vegas. I'm I'm not going to see what he's working on or overhear his hallway conversation with you about a project or any of the other kind of incidental ways we get information. So is it fair to say that one of the things we have to do from a leadership perspective is recognize that whether we mean to or not, we kind of become a hub for that sort of information. I think and, that's a great way to say it. We're we more to kind of share it with people than anybody else. And if we don't, shame on us. Right. If yeah. you don't know some of those things, then <laughs> that's probably not good. <laughs> you probably need to have a different conversation than the one we're having here. So you're probably involved in these conversations. You you know what people have been tasked to do, and you know what they've done well at or what they struggled with. And if you can highlight the victories in the team, then then you help your team trust each other better. Yeah. So if I'm meeting with my sales team and I and I know that person A has done something really well, then I want them to share that with the rest of the team, which gets us to some ethical visibility too. Just uh, within the team, we talked about on a previous episode, yeah. but you ought to go listen to that one if you haven't. But what it also does is it lets the rest of the sales team know that, hey, that person's had success with that. I can go ask them. So I'll just be overt and say, hey, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying, here's a strategy that person A has used. Uh, why don't Person A, tell us more about that. And so they, and everyone else says, well, yeah. Now, if it's always person A, then they're like, well, Kevin's got a favorite, hmm. right? I mean, th so there's some sensitivity to balance. can get out of whack, yeah. but, but I think you follow the point here. Yeah, 
that makes that makes really good sense. So is there is there one more thing that maybe people could do so they can call it out and, and share what they're seeing? Anything else that leaders can do to help build that trust? Probably the best thing that they can do, and this doesn't just this this isn't just about across the team. It's with mm-hmm. that person, and that is to trust them more. Okay, right? offering your trust, extending trust, going first, extending trust is a perfect right. way to say it. Yeah, and that when we do that across our team, and people feel safer in their trust with us, mm-hmm. likely what will start to happen is that they will begin to trust each other more in part because of the example that you have set. Oh, there's a phrase I've heard you say probably 10,000 times since we've been working together is, is uh, leaders go first. And, you know, so, so whatever hard or difficult thing you're asking your team to do, leader goes first. If it's... Unless it's lunch. And unless then you it's lunch. <laughs> and, then, and then they go first. <laughs> but there, there are so many things about like, you know, taking the lead on that and setting the environment and and what I'm hearing and I'm resonating with is the idea that that if the leader is willing to show trust, then it builds trust between team members and the leader. And if if I trust my leader and my leader trusts this other person, then by extension, I probably trust this other person. And it's kind of a virtuous cycle sort of idea. It's absolutely a virtuous cycle. It's not automatic and it may not be immediate, but you're changing culture when you do that. That's awesome. Some great ideas. I know that Wayne and Kevin have both put a lot of thought, a lot of effort into both the long distance leader and long distance teammate. I highly recommend those books. Um, so Kevin, t- tell people where they can get long distance teammate. Since that's a new they, can get, they can get long distance leader, long distance teammate, you know, wherever fine books are sold, they can go to long distance leader book.com or they can go to long distance teammate. That's the new book, long distance teammate.com. Both cases, you can get a sample chapter an excerpt. You can uh, learn more. And in terms of long distance teammate, if you buy a copy now, there's a chance to get some extra bonuses worth way more than the book itself. So (laughs) go get a copy. Thanks for being with me again, Kevin. I appreciate your thoughts and perspectives. We've been working together a long time. and, And what I know is that it comes not only from the heart, but from experience. So thank you. And there's stuff here that we know works because we've seen it work. And I would encourage you to take advantage of it. So what I'm gonna suggest is, well, one, go get the books. And two, listen to what Kevin said, work on applying that in your team and you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week, wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris and thanks for listening.